Hello John, great speaking with you today. Could you start by telling me about your background and how you came to be editor of Fierce Biotech? Well, I've been uh, writing for about 35 years now. I uh, started off with daily newspapers back in Kansas City. Uh, was a freelance writer in Central America for the Dallas Morning News. Um, was a reporter, editor, publisher in the business journal chain of business weeklies in the United States. Uh, been a healthcare writer, and for the last eight years or nine years now almost, uh, I've been the editor of Fierce Biotech, uh, where I've been able to pursue a long standing interest in the life sciences. So tell us a little about your audience. Who visits and what do they come for? Well, they're largely C-level biotech executives. Uh, we aim for a wide range of CEOs and CFOs, uh, the chief medical officers and the like. Uh, and then uh, because we focus a lot on drug development, we have a large number of readers in the pharma R&D side of the business. And what do you think were 2011's biggest stories for biotech? Well, for biotech, I think definitely it's the ongoing absence of IPOs, which has been really big. Um, there have been no ready exits for the venture groups which back these companies, and it's been harder to find early-stage financing because of that. Um, that's really put a crimp on new company creation. Certainly the ongoing restructuring of R&D, with some of the big players looking for more inspiration outside their research empires, uh, the growth of academic pharma partnerships and the drive into emerging markets are also very dominant themes that we follow closely. And many biotechs face intensive funding pressure, especially in times of stock market uncertainty and turmoil. How do you see them coping with the current economic climate? Well, you're seeing fewer venture rounds. Uh, many of them are bigger venture rounds. Uh, there are venture companies like uh, Third Rock in Boston which have shouldered this strategy particularly well. Um, so those biotechs which can get, can get financing are able to plan, understanding just how much runway they have out there uh, for the cash that they have in the bank. The key part about economic uncertainty is it's keeping the small investors out of the biotech arena, or at least it did last year in 2011. Uh, we've been seeing a spike in biotech uh, in the early part of this year in biotech stocks, but that's not going to go on forever. The key response is a uh, drive to do more partnerships early on by biotech companies, and that's a trend that's here to stay. Smart biotechs, I think, really know today how to generate revenue early on, and they're also being built for sale by the big players, to the big players, uh, where the need for these new products that they have is still extremely great. And a lot of pharma growth is focused on the emerging market. So how much biotech activity do you see developing in these areas? It's just beginning on the biotech side, uh, but look for it. You're seeing more venture groups looking to back biotechs with products that can be used in emerging markets. And as R&D in Asia grows among the big pharma companies, and it's growing quickly, you'll see that biotechs will look for more opportunities there as well. But it is very early days still for the biotech community. And which biotech companies are the most exciting ones to watch, in your opinion? Well, that's, that's always an interesting question. Uh, we do the Fierce 15 selection every year where we select 15 up-and-coming biotech companies, and that's always something that's kind of on the radar here. Uh, it's interesting that, that a lot of my favorite biotech companies uh, have been bought out recently, companies like Plexicon and Avala Therapeutics and so on. There is a company down in Dallas called Riata Therapeutics, which has a chronic kidney disease drug uh, called Bardoxalone in development with Abbott. Uh, it signed a, a large licensing pack, something like $400 million uh, for that. And uh, that's one of the companies that I'm following very closely right now. What type of stories do you find the most interesting to report on? Well, for me, it's all about deals and data and R&D trends. But deals and data will always be at the very top of the list. And if you had to pick one, what would be your favorite story covered? Well, I think that would have to be the new focus on productivity and pharma R&D. GlaxoSmithKline, Sanofi, and others have been forced to make some huge changes to spur innovation. Uh, they just can't survive when, as Sanofi CEO Chris Weibacher said recently, over the past decade, every dollar invested in R&D has produced 70 cents in returns. The age of the mass market blockbuster is fading, but new targeted blockbusters are coming along. Uh, the regulatory agencies have made it clear that they're willing to go the extra mile when a treatment is targeted and accompanied by a diagnostic test, and that's the future for medicine and biopharma. 
So where next for the biotech industry and also for Fierce Biotech? Nothing dramatic for the industry or for Fierce Biotech for that matter. Uh, this is the kind of ship that doesn't turn quickly. But the long-term fundamentals are all really quite solid. Uh, the biotech industry is recognized for innovation and developing new products needed by Big Pharma. I suppose eventually small investors are going to see that there's an upside and not just one restricted to hepatitis C therapies. IPOs are going to come back, and we'll see a general upswing because of that, but it's a long, long time coming. Only the very smart and the strongest are going to survive in this environment. Uh, I'd like to think drug developers will also get smarter about the regulatory process, where hopefully we'll see some faster approvals come along, coming along on drugs that clear the bar on efficacy and safety. You can't spend an unlimited amount of money to advance new drugs, and they still haven't struck the right balance between what regulatory agencies are requiring and what drug developers can come up with efficiently. That's a big issue. John, it's been great to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you.